Welcome in to the Arkansas Sports Network's Hometown Sports Football Preview. Proudly presented by Arkansas Tech University, D3 Auto Sales, and Metcalf Trucking and Trailer Repair. Today, we sit down with the head coach of the Lamar Warriors, Josh Jones. Hello, I'm Emma Johnson. I'm a junior at Lamar High School, and I'm with Coach Josh Jones, head coach for the Lamar Warriors. Welcome to the Arkansas Network Football Preview. Um, Coach, I just wanted to say thanks for this joining us as we preview your 2024 season. Um, you had a good season last year, making it to the playoffs. How do you feel? How do you feel about that? Yeah, it was a good year. We, uh, you know, we were tied for the district runner-up and uh, and made the playoffs again for I think the, about the 14th year in a row, 14, 15 years in a row. We made the playoffs, so it's always it's good to have a good tradition and a good. Uh, uh, a good expectation going into every season. And how do you feel about your team coming up this season? Well, the truth is, we could be as good as as we've ever been if we if everything comes together. Uh, you know, there's it's a it's a long way between now and and that first game, and so uh, could be really really good. Even if we are really really good. Our conference is tough. Uh, you have Ozark, Dardanelle, Pottsville, Clinton, Mina. You know, uh, all these teams are, are really tough. And then, you know, throw in uh, Waldron with a new coach and Dover, which has improved every year for the last several years. And, and it becomes a really, really tough schedule. And so even though we might be as good as ever, uh, we'll see, uh, see if that translates into a lot of wins. Um, and you, you did have a lot of seniors last year, and a lot of them played some p pretty big roles in your team. Sure. Um, and how do you plan to fill them? You know, it's tough every year. You're, you're always going to have some really good seniors. Uh, it's always tough to fill those roles. But, you know, as long as those kids keep playing, those kids that are younger, they're just waiting their turn. Uh, they're waiting, their, waiting for their chance to, to get on the field and show uh, the hard work that they've been doing. And um, do you have any new plans this year to run your offense and or defense? Well, we, you know, we, we've been working at some different things. Uh, kids enjoy running spread more, and uh, we have some skilled guys that might be able to do that. So we might be a little bit of a mix under center shotgun th type things. And what about your defense? Um, I mean, mainly... I know you expect some impacts, but how big do you think these impacts might be? Yeah, you know, uh, defensively, we have a lot of kids coming back, especially on the front the front end with defensive line, uh, defensive end, and linebackers. Uh, we lost, uh, we lost, of course, lost a senior linebacker. Uh, but the biggest role is the secondary. We have a lot of holes to fill in the secondary. So we're going to have to get, you know, some younger kids to really step up. And what strengths do you have on your team this year? Uh, you know, anytime you have a three-year returning starter at quarterback, uh, that, that's a big deal. And so uh, quarterback coming back, I think our line is going to be as good or better than, than it has been. Uh, we got some, you know, some strong kids that have been working really hard. And so uh, we have a lot of returners and a lot more depth in our skill positions, which might be more like receivers and type things. But uh, there's quite a few guys that can, can play that. So when you have that kind of depth, then people don't get quite as tired. And do you have any areas of weakness that you've really hit this off season? You know, it, it's a little bit of everything, of course. Uh, there are inexperienced linemen, and so uh, you you got to hit that. Um, we haven't been throwing the ball that much in the past, and so... Uh, we've really worked on route running and and uh, receivers. And do you have you done anything? Have you watched them improved with the, those weaknesses? Yeah, I think that you know, especially some guys have got a lot bigger in the weight room. Uh, they've got you know bigger, faster, stronger, and and when you <laughs> bigger, faster, stronger wins football games. Um, and 
again, with all the seniors you had graduating and a lot of them on your starting lineup, um, how many starters do you have returning exactly? Some, somewhere in the neighborhood of six, seven on both sides of the ball. Uh, it depends. You know, a lot of times last year, it depended on which offensive formation we were in. Uh, so there's 11 guys on offense, but we might have 13, 14 guys that I would count as a starter because just depending on how we lined up, they're on the field uh, in, like in a starting position. So, you know, six, seven guys on both sides of the ball, which is, you know, that's, that's quite a few. And but there, there were a few players who made all conference, all conference. Who were they and what got them to that point? Yeah, you know, uh, Abe James was all state. And you know it's always it's really special to be all state. There's only uh, there's only eight kids in the entire conference that do make all state. And last year we were in a conference with nine teams, and so there's there's a lot of competition for that spot. Uh, off the top of my head, uh, you know, as far as guys that we lost that were on conference, I think uh, I think it was Kit Sanderson, uh, Lane Miller. Uh, I didn't really I haven't looked at it in a while. But, uh, you know, we do have some guys coming back that were all conference, like Caleb Green um, and some other guys that were that were up there also. Caden Woods, I believe, was all conference. Um, and I'm sure there's a couple others. But um, it's always good to get those postseason awards. And that's really based on how many games you win. If you win games, you get more postseason awards. Um, <clears throat> and you had, a, you had an extremely – you got some extremely good players, and you had an extraordinary season. Um, do you have any? Do you have a lot of players that were that are recruited? Uh, not not off last year's team. I don't I don't think I don't think anyone off last year's team plans to play college football. And I don't know. You know, I don't really think that should be the goal of high school football. Uh, you're out there. You're having a good time with your friends. You're getting better. Uh, it's the camaraderie, the fun, the Friday nights. And if you're good enough to get a scholarship, that's just kind of a bonus. Uh, but just high school football is about the love of the sport. And, and, and these guys, you know, they get out there and they love playing in front of the fans. And I know you said it's about the love of the sport, but do you think any of your this year's players could get um, recruited? Or sure. Caleb spotted? Green's getting some attention, especially, uh, you know, he's got the body to be a college receiver. And... Uh, Drake Bowen, I believe, is getting a little bit. He's a big defensive line type guy. And Blake Blackard also a little bit. There may be some other guys that, that come on later, you know, in the season. If they start performing well in the season, then, then they'll get some attention. But, I, I get, you know, there were, there were people came looking at Lane, and Lane, Lane enjoyed high school football, but he didn't have a desire to play in college. And so he just chose not to. And some of your greatest players last year, they just so happen to be 10th and 11th graders. Um, is there any of them, do you feel like they will or should be recruited or scouted out? Yeah, Caleb for sure. He, he, he can be looked at. He's got the size, the speed, like those kind of things. Colleges recruit size and speed. They're looking for college bodies. Uh, you can have a really, really, really good high school football player that's, you know, 5'5", five five, 145 pounds, and – Colleges don't really look at that guy, no matter how good they are. Um, and so, yeah, there's uh, Caleb for sure. Tenth uh, graders, you know, Zayden Rogers has a lot of speed. He has, he has. There's a lot of, he has some hurdles that he has to try to overcome to be eligible to get on the field. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, there, there's a few guys coming up. Cas Grotz, he's got the body size that that he might get recruited along the way. And with so many <clears throat> players, of course, there's got to be some more hidden talents that we don't have. Do you have any surprises or under the radar with you know, your I junior high? With the, the junior high kids coming up? Yes. Uh, of course, Kendrick Carr and Cade Bowen are amazing talents. They're huge. You know, they're in the six foot five, six foot six range with a big body, and they got a little bit of speed to go with it. And so those are the kind of guys that, like, you know, if they develop their D1 bodies, now, you know, who knows? It's a, it's a long way between 10th grade and senior year. We are in a new conference, and this year you can give us a little outlook on the conference. Like, who do you think will be our type of conference? Yeah, Ozark is, is like, they're kind of at the top of the mountain. 
Uh, they they they've been good for years. Uh, they got it seems like they just reload every year. So they're they're always tough. Darnell, you know, Apostle Clinton, Mina. I don't I don't know if I'm not even might not even say those in the right order, but uh, those are all going to be tough games. And and then of course Waldron and uh, Dover, they keep getting better. And so you got to stay on top of your game, not to let somebody slip up on you. And with your team has made conference for how many years straight now? Yeah, I don't know. I've been here 12. <laughs> and so we've made the playoffs 12 years in a row since I've been here. And then there was one year, there were several years, and there was one year that they didn't make the playoffs, and then we've made it ever since. So I'm thinking it's 14, 15 years in a row to make and the playoffs. So what was your season's conference finish last season? What was your team's conference finish? Well, we last tied year? for second, and and there was a lot of teams tied for second, and so we tied for second, but we ended up the fourth seed in the playoffs, and it, we were so close. Uh, all you know, we got beat at box out by one point, and we got stopped at the goal line on the last play of the game. Uh, you get that one yard, you're conference champions. Uh, we played Mayflower at home in a game that I felt like we should have won, and we got beat by six. Uh, we got beat 20 to 14 in a game that I really felt like we should have we should have won, but we just, homecoming or whatever, we played poorly. So if you win either one of those games, you're the conference champion. And, and if you get a good seed going into the playoffs, it really increases your chances to make a run. And so that, you know, you want to be, you want to be top two that way you get a couple of playoff games that are more favorable. Um, and do you have any quotes that you want your players and upcoming players to hear? Uh, you know, off the top of my head, I don't know. I mean, we, we work hard every day. And um, you, you just have to earn it. And so if they keep in their mind uh, as they work to earn it, I mean, you will reap what you sow. Like, that's a Bible verse. <laughs> and so that's a promise. If you work hard and you put in the work, then you'll get the reward out of it. And I know you've got, you've got tons of players coming up, and you've got tons of players returning. Um, do you have any ideas for any how games are going to run or how practices are going? Uh, practice is going really well right now. We're in spring. We're doing spring football. I've got 48 which is a good number. Uh, hopefully all those kids stick it out. I know sometimes in the spring it's going so fast and they're looking around and they think, man, I might not get to play much. But it, it's so early, you can't, you can't think that. You just have to keep working. And um, you know, we have six JV games. And so there's a lot of opportunities for a kid that might not be starting to prove how good they are. That way they, they pass somebody. And so with your great season last year and many of your players making conference, is there anything you want to highlight? Any shout outs? I, I guess they, they, I don't know. They all need a shout out, I guess. Um, uh, Caleb, Caleb's been doing a good job being a leader. Blake Blacker has been a leader on the offensive line. And those guys got to just keep continuing. And then Caden Woods to come on. Uh, he need, it's hard for that guy, you know, some people to be vocal leaders. But uh, need those guys to come on and, and rally the troops and get everybody excited. And so, with your season come with your season starting for 2024, how strong do you feel about how your players are going to play? Feel pretty good about it. I mean, as far as um, I think that we'll come in with a lot of confidence. Um, you know, they expect to win. That's what that's what we do and. And so whenever you have a team that expects to win, uh, they're pretty tough to beat. It was, it was amazing meeting with you and hearing about the great things that your team has coming in the 2024 football season. You bet. Thanks for having me and go Warriors.
We would also like to thank the Lamar East Lab for their contributions on this video. Thanks again for joining us on the Arkansas Sports Network's Hometown Sports Football Preview. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the Arkansas Sports Network on YouTube to catch more previews and all the latest updates on your favorite teams.